I would like, before the break, to give you a short introduction in something very simple as an alternative model to capitalism. What? Okay. I was thinking about and looking into the TEDx uh, archive to find uh, a speech like that from Karl Marx, but couldn't find one. <laughs> so um, I have to do that myself now. And I was actually thinking also about um, how Karl Marx would stand here today and what kind of model he would introduce. Or maybe even Adam Smith, we don't know. So I don't know. But what I know is how I got excited by this idea, and I would like to give you an introduction into that. Is this fine? It's not me hanging around there, unfortunately. But I had the privilege to work in an exciting organization named Greenpeace the last 10 years, and the last five years globally. So I was responsible to go to the offices and help them to, to build them up and do environmental work in these countries. So I had a lot of discussion because I insisted each time to sit together with all staff members and the volunteers and talk to them and hear their problems. This is very interesting. Just imagine in India, for example, Bangalore, very hot, uh, I think it was 100 people, sitting together and talking about the future of the world in an angry, in a wild, in a very confrontative and aggressive and still a non-violent way. It was three years ago and there were the old guys from the board and the young people, the crowd and the people, the campaigners and everybody else. And it was a wild debate about why Greenpeace should, should still stay and remain within the system the democratic system, the economical system, because actually the challenge is to pick, to solve it within the system, was the argument. So this was quite interesting for us because it was, of course, a discussion about capitalism. It was, of course, a discussion about alternative models to um, capitalism, and we actually didn't know exactly. So what we did, we built up on a global scale a group which was named the Burning Platform. And in this group, we discussed some burning issues for us for the next five to 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, we don't know. After the disaster of Copenhagen, it was very clear that the way how the world looks like and works doesn't really work out to solve the problem of climate change. So on the one hand, it was a discussion about the power shift from the G8 down to the G20, at least. It was a discussion about how can we bring the issue of climate change closer to people that they understand and not only afraid and don't know what to do about it? And we discussed the shrinking of democratic space and especially also the paradigm shift in economics. And I have to admit we didn't find solutions so far on the last point. So we are just looking into alternative models. And then I came home to Austria and a friend of mine said, Oh, I have just written this book. It's named Gemeinwohlökonomie. And why don't you read it? And so I did. And when you look into the last years, and especially in the last months, the developments of those months, you see that Greenpeace and Greenpeace people in India are not the only people who are scared about the future and desperately looking for alternatives to capitalism and the economic model. We will see what comes out of the Occupy movement. I hope they will not get captured, occupied by the zeitgeist. I hope that there are still people who, in a non-violent way, really start to challenge the system. And I hope that there is a movement, with a lot of people out there who help us to build up something new. So this is this book, and I would like to explain you the main idea of this book, because otherwise we would stand here or sit here in the next few days. You know this guy, huh? Let's say he stands for the worst way of capitalism. Actually, he's not so unsympathetic. Do you know why Dagobert Duck is actually also in a very nice guy? 
he's human, huh? <laughs> which is uh, strange with the duck. Yeah. But uh, in, in principle, he has very, some, very strong human attitudes and needs. But he stands for profit. The goal is to increase the capital. Success is increase capital and profit. And you see there are three main defects why people are angry now because of that. It's the fourth force to growth, an unequal distribution, and as we see now in many systems, instability. This could be a picture of common welfare. What do we describe as common welfare? It's just that we and companies and everybody is looking as a main driver what helps the society, what helps the people, what helps, helps us in being together and flourish together. Another principle of capitalism is competition, or you can say concurrency, or actually you can even say contra-currency. When you look into behaviors of hedge, for, for, uh, hedge fund managers or banks or others, then you see that they sometimes even take into account that they kill themselves before they help somebody else. Isn't this sick? Let's think about the model of cooperation. So when you look the main idea of this book and this common welfare economy is nothing more than we change profit as a main driver into common welfare as a main driver and contra currency to cooperation. Sounds convincing, isn't it? Money rules at the moment. Can we find an economical system where money serves? It is about income for worker or needs, common welfare motif. Democratic issues, democratic movement, which is connected to the economical system. How many of you think, okay, this is just a bunch of hippies? This is naive. You're talking about a system which is so strong that this kind of naive ideas will never come into force. I doubt that. And I have now contributed and participated in this common welfare economy the last year. And I will tell you three reasons why I think this is one alternative. It's not the only alternative. We have a lot of others at the moment coming up on different parts of the world. The first is, and you don't have to read that. The only thing what I want to give you is to introduce the idea is a Gemeinwohl matrix, which means a common welfare balance. This means it goes into the heart of a company. And we ask companies next to their economical balance to do a common welfare balance. And there you have five main criteria. This is dignity, Solidarity, sustainability, social justice, and democracy and transparency. Five main values which help us to live together. How could it be that a company serves those values? And this was not developed by some hippies, this was developed by company owners, entrepreneurs different parts of Austria, but actually from four different countries. Within the last half a year, and it was now introduced the first time, how they applied to that. Only one example. One guy was saying, okay, we got only 322 uh, points out of 1,000 points. And actually, we thought we are a very good company, also serving common welfare. And then we went into the different categories, and we found out, that there are some issues where we're really lagging behind. For example, this company was found uh, the generation before, four people, so already now the new generation with the children are 
benefiting from this company. And only five of those, 16 people, are working in the company, and 11 just benefit from the profit of this company. And so this means that they were downgraded on this issue, because there were some people who were not doing some work for the, for the sake of this company and just benefiting from the profit. And some other issues in this. And this was a European leader of biomass, so it's just a bigger company. The Sparta Bank in Germany is also an example, which is actually quite a big company already, 1,000 people, will, which has already introduced the first time a common welfare balance. Another thing, can you imagine that there is something like a de democratic bank? Since two years, people are working, also mainly people who have an idea about the bank system, to build up a democratic bank. And it looks like as if this democratic bank will get started beginning of 2013. There is a possibility that people and companies who work for the common welfare or maybe have a different understanding what the bank should do can contribute to. And in principle, this is not something completely new because think about the founding idea of Raiffeisen and the Volksbank. This is just a cooperative. I think maybe they put too much on their shoulders now in the last two or three hundred, uh, 150 years. And so they got corrupted in many ways. Think about the system, how it should be to serve a common welfare, to serve the people. So this is the second project, which is at the moment running and hopefully getting started at the beginning of 2013. Within one year, we have now 403 companies already who are supporting this common welfare initiative. And they are, as I said, from one person up to 1,000 people. And every day at the moment, new people, new interests come in. 100 of those companies already introduced the first time a common welfare balance, which is quite impressive for the first half year. There is at the moment a consultant and an advice and an audit system being built up because what we try to do is to differentiate ourselves also from sustainability reports or common social responsibility reports is that somebody is really looking into that if what they say is right, like a normal, normal economical balance. So, there will be an audit system, an independent audit, who will look into the companies and see where they are with their common welfare balance. We have two, 20 energy fields in different parts of four countries where people come together to serve this idea, think how we can develop this further, and at a certain time also start a democratic process of building up conventions where people should decide about their economic values and economic goods in their influence and in their regions and in their communities by themselves. This is quite a radical thought, but when I see the speed how this was built up in the last year, then I'm actually quite optimistic that this is possible as well, because time is ripe for that. So we had press conferences in four countries on October 6, and please follow now how it will be written about. At the end, a quote. Which means, if a person acts for the benefit of others, he will gain the appreciation of his fellow humans and the love of those that share his life. And especially the latter, without doubt, leads us to our deepest joy on earth. And this was not by Jesus, Franz von Assisi, or the Dalai Lama. Actually, this was a guy who is not completely combined in our thinking with common welfare. This is Darwin, Charles Darwin. So maybe we have to think about a new way of Darwinism. <coughs> and this is the way how we can build up a new system as well. If you're interested, join the movement. If you want to challenge it, please do. 
because we need critical spirits in that. And if you want to join, then join. Warmly invited. Thank you very much.